the Southern Ocean. Hang on! Australia's deadliest stretch of water. But if you're game, there's big money to be made out here. A couple of customers, 600 bucks worth. Sometimes you just need luck, you rub the wood. We're not greedy, we just want more. It's nearing the end of the Rock Lobster winter hunting season. I'll take your finger off. Yeah, I'm from the mark! <laughs> Money! For the lobster men, it's their last chance to put cash in the bank. The bigger the better, if it weighs, it pays. Until the fishing grounds reopen in spring. Get it right, and they can make a fortune. $12,000 worth. But get it wrong. Yeah. And they can lose it all. It's uh, came over now, I think. This time. Boy, the Skipper Danny's roller coaster ride to the finish line. Where are the lobsters? 800 craze. You know, they're getting pretty juicy. The bold contender changes tack. I'm rubbing the wood, I'm rubbing the wood. Bets it all on Brindles. If I was playing cricket, I'd be three for none. And pot luck. Oh, no. You got over the top of a rock. Yeah. Hits the lobster fleet Break. hard. That's more money down the drain. Middle Rocks, the west coast of Tasmania. And the crew of the Minamara has hit a purple patch. Dolphins in front of us. People pay money to see that stuff, go to SeaWorld and all that. We're getting paid to see it. A bumper load yesterday netted them 81 big reds. Their season total stands at 188 lobsters. So if we got 112, that'd give us 300. So that'd be a, a nice round number to get. You just never know until you pull all your pots. That's oh, fishing. That's, that's it. Pot luck, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> pot luck. Is that why we call them pots? Yeah. <laughs> Third pot for the day, matey. Let's see how we go. Tell us what you got, baby. makes getting up at four o'clock in the morning worthwhile. It's pulling the gear and seeing at least 100 kilos in the wash tank when you're finished. There's some work to do if they're going to hit that number. the lobster pot has snapped. Lobster pots cost between $300 and $600 each, and every skipper has their favourite type. Steel pots, for me, fishing inshore and offshore, they're more flexible. And the reason I use steel pots is because we probably work a bit deeper water, and nearly all our pots weigh the same, so I can read them in the tide a bit better. And I think they sink heaps better than a stick one. I like to use the stick pots. You don't get as long out of them. You only get about three years out of a stick pot and then you've got to replace him. But I think they catch red fish a lot better. Any chance of getting that back? Probably not. Wow. Clive's steel pot is now part of the continental shelf reef structure. It's frustrating because that's how we, how we catch fish. And one pot gone is, could equate to 20 to 100 kilos per trip. I don't know how that just broke off like that. We make sure that all our ropes are yeah. normally in good nick, just sprayed straight through. Didn't even put hardly any weight on that then. She was full too, I reckon. Yeah, <laughs> probably. It was up the end where they were better. 
Yeah, it was too. That's frustrating. That's very shit. Hey. Blow us apart. Costs a couple hundred dollars for me to make them. I make my own pot, so if I had to go and buy one, it's about it's getting close to three hundred dollars to replace a pot. Plus we're down one pot that's um not fishing anymore. That's what happens when the when the skipper touches the ropes. I better not touch him, Zach. I cast it. Oh. Lobster men are big on signs. This next pot could make or break team spirits. Track the baby! The big reds are back. Three so far. Three. Oh well, it's a start. Yep. The Minamara's hot streak has turned lukewarm, but they're still in the game. Hobart, Tasmania. And the crew of the Barralee is gearing up to head back out to sea on a five-day run. Without wages or anything else, just, just the cost of going to sea is about three to three and a half thousand dollars. We probably need to catch at least five to six hundred kilo to cover everything with wages, costs, uh, and come out with a profit for the boat at the end of it. You bring one of those lasagnas, did you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Good on you, mate. The freeze, the Warren's going to keep a close eye on his young deckhand, Jai. Anyway, how are you coming along, mate? Pretty good. Pretty good? Yeah. Jai lost his mum a week ago. Her funeral was yesterday. Jay, she was a big turnout there, wasn't she? There's 450 people there. 450 people. That was a good service, though, wasn't it? I mean, it was, yeah. yeah, oh, that yeah. Was, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm the eldest out of Harry and Jewel. So, yeah, there is a bit of responsibility there now that mum and dad are gone. Skipper Clive is hunting for big red lobsters in close to the rocks. There's a rock that breaks out here. See here? Where I and I've got pots that run up here into the hinder. It's being out there in the elements, it's going out into the wild, into the unknown, and being able to return with a load of fish. It's just an accomplishment sort of thing. Show us what you got, baby. Oh yeah, baby. Nice one in there. Couple. Around the deck naked, so it's all <laughs> like that. Well, you don't have to do that. <laughs> I didn't say you have to watch. <laughs> yeah, so seeing Zach getting excited about catching some fish, it makes me feel proud as a skipper that we're catching fish and it's I'm putting those pots in the right area and we're working as a team. Yes, there's a nice one in there. Mr. Chumba Wumba. Uh, there we go. Oh, I helped him out. Their risky in-close gamble is paying off. You get him, you got the gloves. Clive's lukewarm streak has turned hot again. He'd be about 20 years old. Mr Chumbawamba is probably about three kilos. He'll net the boys roughly $300. How would I feel about not fishing anymore? I think it would um, it'd take a big, big part of my life away because um, I just like the freedom of it and I guess the uncertainty of it and also I guess that bit of a risk being out there and dealing with nature I really like that sort of thing. The Barralee is away. The trip will be a good distraction for Jai. For a young fella to lose his father approximately two years ago, and then his mother only just recently, and for him to come out as good as what he has, I think he's done a marvellous job. 
I suppose time is the only thing that's is going to tell us at the end of the trip whether he holds up all the way through. Warren's motoring to Matt's Syker Island. It's his favourite hunting spot. The area is full of big red lobsters, but it can be a deadly place to be on a windy day. Here I lost the boat at Matt Syker. Went to visit the you know, lighthouse keepers in those days. We come back and then she was on the rocks. But it's been worse than that because there's, there's been several lives lost just out here to the south of us. Boats rolled over in bad weather and just hope it's nice like this tomorrow. Thank you, don't no joy. Number one thing. Keep the cabin happy with coffee. <laughs> That's how you get a good side of the captain. <laughs> When we go back to work, he's still got to pull his weight. Um, he's got a job to do and he's got to continue to do it. Nigel and I, we're the grandfather fleet, so yeah, we'd probably look after Jai better than anybody else if the truth's only known. <laughs>